everything <clears throat> will start soon. Okay, so now it's recording. Okay. <clears throat> and everything you see yourself mm -hmm. and... Uh-huh. Okay. And then do you want to present? Oh, I am presenting. Do you not see that anymore? I don't see that anymore. It says I'm presenting to everyone. Stop. Oh, I see presenting, but I mean your slides. Oh. Well, that's weird. I don't know why. You don't see my slides anymore? I see, I see the slides, but I see the slide bar on the left and I see the first slide. I don't see like the presenta presentation. Oh, maybe so maybe we have to do a certain tab. Let me see here. <laughs> I think I just have to do present. Okay. Is that better? Go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just hadn't hit present yet. Okay. All right. I guess we just wait and see. Yeah. Oh, see. do we have a third? I, oh no, we have two of you reading host <laughs> and presentation. Oh. Okay. So. Have they come to uh, take care of the snow yet? No. Okay, so when it's when so when it's I, three o'clock, we'll we'll I'll start right on. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying, Beth? No, that's okay. Um, so are we? So. I, I'm just going to share, and then when I'm done with my slides, then am I going to say, okay, Amy, take over? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds great. Because we're recording no matter what, right? Whether anybody shows or not, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So um, if you want to, you could say, I'll say I'm Amy Gutierrez from ISD, and you can say I'm Beverly Harmon from Better Federal and State Programs. And then, are and, then doing... and that would be your cue to just start the just start. initial okay. slides. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say welcome to 10 tips and then yeah. Gotcha. Perfect. o'clock. Hello, everyone, and welcome to 10 Tips for Onboarding and Differentiating Instruction for Multilingual Learners, or MLs. My name is Amy Gutierrez from ISD. And I am Beverly Herman, Administrator in Federal and State Programs. So our first, oops, I have to switch the slide. So um, we'll first begin with a short overview of our norms. Um, be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. Um, if there are any of these norms that you think you need to prioritize today, please choose one and 
prioritize that for the rest of our meeting. Uh, another norm in this virtual environment is to mute your microphone and turn your camera on if you're comfortable and if you want to leave it off, that's totally fine as well. If you have a question or comment for us during the during the uh, bite size. PD, please at the end of our slides as well. As we do with everything. Excuse me. We begin with our um, we begin with our uh, our standards, our MTSS framework. The MTSS framework is rooted in everything that we do in Camions and the foundation for all of our professional learning. We'll be focusing today on the uh, evidence-based practices for academics. Also, ISD has established these best practices for digital teaching and learning. And today's focus is gonna be on that personalized learning as we'll be taking into consideration all of our student populations that we serve and discussing ways uh, you can customize that personalized learning experience to support specifically the individual needs of our ML students. Our learning intention today is to provide you with a few tools, some tips um, to help you organize a welcoming environment for multilingual learners and differentiate instruction to meet that the unique and various needs of our ML students. Our agenda first we'll start off with, oops, I'm not advancing the slides, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, I don't know what it's doing. I apologize, it's having that same error, Amy, where it's not letting me advance. Okay. Do you want me to mm -hmm. see what happens if I can present? Oh, there we go. Okay, I found it. I just had to. Okay. So I apologize. This was what I was talking through earlier. And here are our learning intentions for today, which we talked about already. Our agenda will give you a little bit of background on our departments, both federal and state programs and instructional support department, um, and talk through who the main contacts are, and then give you some tips from each of us. So as Amy, or as I mentioned earlier, I'm Beverly Herman uh, with federal and state programs. And we go. So the main goal of federal and state programs is to identify a student as multilingual learner or ML. Um, we identify not only students that are MLs, meaning that they um, have an English, that they are from a, a background where English is not the primary language and it, it, they have enough uh, demands that they need to have additional services to make sure that they access uh, the content in our classrooms. So we also identify those students that are new to the US. We help support the onboarding of, of new ML students to your classroom. We do the initial screening for language proficiency, provide guidance for culturally re relevant practices, um, support uh, goal development for individualized language development plans or ILDPs, and oversee the ML evaluation team for students, or for ML students with disabilities. So let's start with our first tip. Students often, students often come to us from many, many different countries. And as we know, it can be difficult to pronounce, pronounce their names. Our first tip is to pronounce names correctly. It may seem <clears throat> as if that is uh, like, yeah, I already do that. However, oftentimes um, students come to our schools and their names are not pronounced correctly. Let me give you a quick story about how that might impact a student. Several years ago, when I first started in our district and I was a teacher specialist with the same department, um, we had several Syrian refugees that started in our schools. We had one school that had three boys, three boys and they were second graders. I was called to observe in a classroom 
that uh, a teacher was just having some difficulty. The student wasn't responding to, to cues and commands, um, requests, and there was actually some concern whether it was just defiance or was there some trauma, was there a hearing issue? So I went to observe and walked in the classroom for the first time and the teacher was calling everybody up for different tasks, called the student, Mohammed, 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 please come here. Nothing, the student did not even recognize or respond at all. So I walked around the room for a little bit trying to decide what to do and I came across his desk and here was his name written on the desk. And I thought, oh, I'm just gonna try this. And I said, Mahmoud. Immediately a light bulb went on, he turned his head and said, yes. His classmates that were also in the same second grade were Mohammed and Mohamed. So as you can see, there was an assumption that each of these students was named Mohammed. And that once that it cleared up the issues pretty quickly. Names are really rooted in family culture and religion, and they're really an extension of our identities. Think for a minute about our immigrant students. They've already suffered the trauma of leaving behind extended family, friends, schools, loved ones, everything they've known. We don't want them to lose their name too. Immigrant students and even those ML students um, have their cha name changed for various reasons. Maybe there are three Marias in the class, so we're gonna call one Mary or we're gonna do something else. We really wanna be aware of how important a name can be. So our first strategy is to pronounce names correctly in order to foster a sense of, of a student's belonging and uh, that their background and everything they bring with it and their names are valuable. There are a couple of resources here that I linked. Nope. Sorry, I'm having trouble with this on the presenting. This first one, this is linked. There are several books that can give you um, picture books about the importance of a name that can be shared with your students. There's also an IES document um, that has main conventions for several um, different for several different uh, cultures that can help you understand how names are, whether it, you know how many names and what the significance of the middle name, etc., is. And last but not least, there is a lovely website called Name Shouts, and you can type in a name. Um, and it will give you some various pronunciations from different cultural backgrounds. Amy, any questions or anything at this point? Not at all. Not yet. Perfect. So let's go on to strategy or tip number two. So uh, we all know Maslow's hierarchy of basic needs. Um, pronouncing names correctly is just one of those ways to develop a student's need of belonging. And uh, the next couple tips that we're gonna talk about uh, will also help you to meet some of those physiological needs that we all have. Needs like, I'm hungry, I don't feel good, I have to use the bathroom. So for those, for those types of needs, we have, my, so we have communication books that offer some survival language. Uh, we have those in 27 languages. Uh, you can contact me in the federal and state programs department and also get in touch with your coach if you think this is a resource that you might need. Uh, our coaches know how to access these resources. The communication cookbook, so here's one in Swahili. It will have thing, it will have just short phrases. I'm hungry. And it will give you a pronunciation, Nenaja. And that way, the student, if he's saying this or she, you will know what they say. The other thing that we've done is for most of the languages, we're not quite done yet, but most of the languages, we've also created a question book that accompanies it. So if you have a student that you're that doesn't have a good command of the language yet and is having trouble communicating, you can ask these questions to try to determine the student's need. Similarly, so similarly, visual schedules and classroom labels uh, can also help meet basic needs. They'll also help the students navigate a, the US educational system. 
Some of the things that you'll see, um, this classroom label, while this visual schedule is very um, elementary, um, there are real photos in here. This is a, it's hard to see, but this is a picture of a toilet. We have a picture of students sitting in the right area for math and social studies and science. Um, and at the secondary level, this could be each of the students' teachers in the order of their schedule each day. That, that way, at least when a student, you know, because a student will start making an association and they'll know which order their classes are just by using that visual schedule. Uh, to get these made for you or to get support making these, again, you can contact federal and state programs. We're here to help you with that. Another great way to make a student feel uh, welcome and to help them navigate is to have these uh, labels around your classroom. We have these labels in very various different languages that have desk, paper, pencil. So we can, you know, you can help a student understand what resources they need to have ready to participate in the day's activity. Again, uh, they have the English word, the, uh, the native language uh, label, but for those students that are, you know, maybe first grade, second grade, and still aren't reading, they also have uh, the pronunciation in the native language. And lastly, on this slide, a really simple thing that I have seen worked wonders with so many students um, is just to learn a phrase or two of the student's native language. I have watched students fear in their eyes and you say, Salam, Name man, Mrs. Herman Est, Ast. And they, they're like, they really understand that you value their language. By the way, that meant, hello, my name is Mrs. Herman. Um, there are resources everywhere. Uh, we can help link you to them, but this in particular is linked to a, a site called 17 Minute Language, and it will give you these really common phrases with audio pronunciations to help you. So when you know you have that student coming, you could say hello, goodbye, yes, no, etc. Anything to add there, Amy? Okay. Moving on. All right, this is a little bit less of a strategy, I would say, and more of just a planning ahead um, uh, consideration. The first, one of the things that has to happen is before that multilingual student comes to your classroom, you need to plan ahead for what those first few days are gonna look like. Will you assign a peer buddy? What training will that buddy need? Do you want an interpreter to come? Interpreters can be set up through federal and state programs. If you do, what will you have that interpreter tell them? Will you have them go over common routines, how to open a, open a locker, walk them through their schedule? What will you have them do? And then something that we oftentimes don't look at, uh, think about is what drills are coming up. Students that have just come from maybe a traumatic event, maybe a traumatic move to a new country, and we have a fire drill or a lockdown drill. That can be really frightening when you don't know what's going on and you don't know if what's happening is real or not. Plan ahead for those things. Linked to this calendar right here. If I can let it come up, but it doesn't seem to want to. So in this presentation, there is a link um, with this calendar uh, that takes you to a well-written list of items that you may want to consider that you can pull and say, yes, I want to do this, I want to do this, and I want to do this. So that's linked right there. And the, again, strategy four is more of a practice than, than a tool, but lean on your student support teams. SST teams are there to uh, help you and navigate interventions or Tier, even tier one instruction for your students that may need a little extra support. We recommend that, a stu that the students that are brand new to the United States, so we're not talking about just every student that comes in, but a student that might be new to the United States with very limited English, um, taking them to your SST just so that there's a case manager and there's someone checking in on not only them, but also you to help and support. And before Amy takes over, we wanted to um, talk a little bit about the stages of language acquisition. 
as Amy moves through the next, um, the next instructional set of tips and routines, um, this is something that we'd like you to consider. It can be challenging to know what language a student can produce. A link to the title of this slide is a document that will walk you through um, students at the early beginning levels in, of, of English language all the way through intermediate. What types of language they can um, produce, some things that you might be able to, you know, to ask them how, you know, so in this case, we have an early production. They might have one or two word sentences, short phrases. They can respond to yes, no questions. There's some guidance here for you. And then there are some um, stems that you may be able to incorporate within your instruction to help them. Uh, to help them access the content. So again, students in your classrooms that are MLs will be, will from every, every, every stage of language acquisition. So knowing where your students are and then meeting them where they're at is really, really key. And now we are on to Amy. All right. Thanks, Bev. Once again, I'm Amy Gutierrez and I am a specialist in ISD. And Bev, since you are presenting, I'll just give you a thumbs up when I'm ready to, to move to the next slide. Will that work? Okay. So now that we've gone over the initial steps for onboarding for multilingual learners, I'm gonna go over some ways that uh, we can support you here in ISD and provide some tips for differentiating instruction. And, um, you know, on the ML team, the other specialists that we have are um, Angie Holden, uh, Julie Stefan Lindsay, uh, Michelle Harward, um, Allison Duncan. Um, gosh, and then I, am I missing one more? Hallie Kirk. So um, feel free to reach out to any of them as well. Julie Stefan Lindsay. Dan Stefan Lindsay, Lindsay yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So in ISD, uh, we support schools with instruction. This can be in the form of district-wide PD, bite-sized PD, or we can provide individual and small group consultations along with you know, the monitoring and making recommendations regarding curriculum and other instructional um, resources and practices and software. We came up with this graphic to highlight six uh, main high yielding strategies that help in differentiation. These probably look familiar to you. And one thing we want to emphasize with them um, in differentiating for your multilingual learners is that you really aren't implementing any new techniques. They are a part of the MTSF framework and best practices for digital teaching and learning that Bev mentioned before, and they overlap with the instructional priorities included in our curriculum guides. Um, so you can see the strategies that are good for multilingual learners are really good for all students. Our core instructional strategies for language learning, um, and I'm still back on that person. Um, are based off of um, the USBE DLI program graphic, and they are the pillars of language instruction for DLI. You'll see them for world language through ACTFL, um, and we find that um, they're the same for multilingual learners. We have um, several specialists, DLI and world language teachers and coaches who support these teachers. Um, so we needed to have a common language with respect um, to effective instructional strategies so we can focus on um, just these six. And this isn't to say we are making the recommendation for teachers to start using all six right away, every day, but maybe choosing even one or two and then using them consistency, consistently will, build, um, will make a big difference. Um, cons consistency and repetition in practices, um, developing routines, as Bev mentioned earlier, um, these really help your multilingual learners build confidence. So our first pillar um, we have here is uh, language and concept objectives, or, you know, in other words, teacher clarity. 
And um, if you want to just click on that. Um, we've linked this to uh, some pages in our curriculum guide, and I'm not sure if it's working on your end or not, but um, I just did some screenshots if you want to go back to that original screen. There you go. Um, on, on this, um, you'll, you'll see once you go into the curriculum guides that we've linked it to, um, you know, what our learning intentions and success criteria. That's basically, um, the success criteria is basically where you would incorporate your language objectives. And we have an example here for you. Um, you know, I can, um, in, in this example where it, it, uh, it states, I can rephrase important details in my own words. This may be your language objective for a lesson, you know, um, with regard to like um, identifying the important details in a text. And uh, in the notes, I also linked uh, an article to um, the Colorín Colorado website where, you know, you can look at other example, examples of how to, um, to use language objectives in your, in your lesson planning. Okay. Our next pillar is um, co pro comprehensible input and um, finding ways to make um, the content and language comprehensible to your students. And one way of doing this is providing visual supports. Um, and here we recommend using authentic images as opposed to clip art and things like that. Um, as you know, they may not be identify by, uh, identifiable by all of your students from different cultures. Um, we also recommend, you know, building your, their background knowledge with these images that they may be familiar with and even sharing your own stories um, and experiences that they can relate to. We also um, linked here to our um, systematic vocabulary uh, section in the, in the um, curriculum guides. Um, here, these systematic vocabulary routines I mean, they take into account all of the factors of making language and content comprehensible for your multilingual learners. Um, you know, connecting the new words to what the student already knows can build the semantic network in their brain. Um, here, you may be wondering um, if using translation, you know, would fall under this category of comp comprehensible input. And while you, you it might, um, you want to use translations sparingly um, and provide abridged or condensed reading materials, um, you know, as much as possible. Uh, a lot of these translations that come from uh, Google Translate or Word.Word, .word, they may not always be accurate. So I always caution against using them all the time. For key vocabulary, you know, you can use the images like I mentioned earlier, or uh, for longer reading passages, you might find a visual text that'll give enough background and make the reading comprehensible. Um, also graphic organizers here are a big help. Um, but if you're looking for translations, our Title III district page also provides useful resources for short phrases, vocabulary lists, um, all in different languages, several different languages. And here's the image that I have from our curriculum guide of the systematic vocabulary. Okay, uh, checks for understanding are is the uh, the next pillar, or opportunities to respond. And we've also linked this to the curriculum guide. Uh, this can be done in the way of a choral response, or having the students use hand signals, um, or a total physical response. Uh, you know, students may not respond verbally right away. So when refer um, 
when referencing the stages of language development uh, document that Bev shared earlier, you will see um, that multilingual learners, when they're in the pre-production stage, um, they may go through a silent period, and this may take up to two years. Um, on average, as research indicates, language proficiency um, for them, for multilingual learners to reach language proficiency, it may take um, anywhere from seven to nine years. So um, even though you may not get a, a, a verbal response right away, you know, using some of the other tips that we have in the guide um, for, you know, providing responses using hand signals, um, even whiteboards and things like that, um, having them point to responses um, or using a four corners um, strategy, all, all of that um, can, be, can be incorporated for multilingual learners. And here's the screenshot from the curriculum guide as well. I do, we do, you do is our next pillar. Um, you know, or explicit instruction. And we um, linked this to the curriculum guide as well. We want to ensure that we are um, providing, you know, modeling for our multilingual learners, you know, and having um, and modeling this student actions throughout our lesson. And this, um, this page in our map will provide some extra resources since we don't have a lot of time um, in our bite-sized PD, but it's always there for you to reference and um, you can reach out to us to, to get support in implementing these. Okay, our next pillar is engagement strategies. And this can be through a think, pair, share, um, having uh, students turn to their shoulder partner and paraphrase, or you can use structured classroom discussions. And these are all, this is also linked to um, a section in our curriculum guides that'll give step-by-step -step, uh, recommendations on how to, how to use this in your instruction. Uh, one thing that we wanted to stress is that you want to know ahead of time of what you'd like your students to reproduce verbally and focus on the language exempt objective, you know, um, you know, referring back to those example, that example that I shared earlier, sharing details from a story passage, you know, um, you may have them, you know, rephrase or, or paraphrase to their, to their partner, um, in using their own words. And, um, you'll want to provide, you know, the complete sentence frames. And in the curriculum guide, we have some recommendations for those. Um, you don't always just want to have them use just one word when they're practicing with their partner, but including, you know, other parts of the dialogue that they, they would need for that language skill. And um, instead of cold calling on multilingual learners, you'll want to ask for volunteers once they've already had a chance to share their discussion in groups or in partners. So students have a chance to build confidence in responding and speaking in front of everyone. And then just remind, um, remind everyone of eye contact or, you know, facial expressions and gestures. And even for yourself, you know, some students may not feel comfortable with this. Um, and it's just building that um, over time. Our next pillar is um, language references. And these may be concept walls or word walls or cue cards or like um, having them think, you know, wait time and then, you know, listening, speaking, um, using graphic organizers that reinforce the content you can reference throughout the lesson. And um, we've also linked this to, um, scaffolds that we have in our curriculum guides. This will give you um, some ideas on what you can use to reference throughout the lesson. You know, and going back to the graphic organizers, we want to just, in any um, cue cards, word walls, 
uh, you want to make sure that students know how to use it as use those resources as well, those language references as well during instruction. Um, we also recommend using um, language references in your planning, like um, the language acquisition chart that Bev shared earlier and the WIDA standards, which we have also linked into the slides um, from the curriculum guides for your reference. Amy, can I ask, how will uh -huh. they access this presentation with the links in it? Do you know? I will think it'll be on the Canyons U page. I think it'll be on the Canyons U page. Yeah. Great. Good question. <laughs> Sorry. We'll have to check in with Camille once we're finished up with this. But, um, okay. And then uh, going back to our learning intention and success criteria for today, hopefully um, you've gotten some ideas on how you can um, successfully integrate some practices into at your school site or into your instruction. And again, you can always feel free to reach out to one of us for support, you know, and to the ML team in ISD. Oh, and we had this Padlet at the end for everyone to um, respond to. So I guess even though we didn't have any participants today, um, you could just, you know, after viewing this video, if you have any questions, you would probably, you would still have access to this link and uh, be able to, to communicate with us that way as well. Okay. Once again, thank you for your time today. And Bev, did you want to explain the, the link that we have here to contact us? So, um, sorry, I'm looking at this. Um, so there's a link here with who to call. And quite honestly, if you can get in touch with Amy or myself, we will make sure that you get to the right support and help that you need. Um, and it looks like the Canyons U Bite Size PD page is right here. And I'm assuming that's where we will post the uh, recording and the presentation. So you have access to all of our links. And then here's how you get relicensure credit. Again, um, have a great afternoon and thank you so much for viewing this. Thank you.